there. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly compose um, the rest of it here. You guys can watch and work alongside where I am. That's DIA for dialogue. Here we have a bulleted list. But because there is no differentiation between bulleted and unnumbered list in this document, I'm just going to call it unnumbered list. Regular P, regular P. Here we have exercise. Actually, see, here's an example in this exercise one. I missed that head, so I can go ahead and compose that now. X. And these are numbered lists inside an exercise, so it's E, X, and L. Here we have our sense line, and as you can see, there are tabs here. Tabs don't mean anything, um, but they do indicate here that these should be indented in one level. So we'll go to sense lines. We won't worry about the tabs right now. We can get rid of those easily later. Now I am going to compose this um, paragraph even though it's, it is um, a P paragraph, it, the reason why it, it is because uh, this is a paragraph continued. The sense of uh, the poetry uh, interrupted this thought. And so this paragraph continued, um, that is almost, I wouldn't say an editorial thing, but you need human input in order to see um, um, where um, these should be. So we're gonna go here. make that paragraph continued. Scroll up, make sure we haven't missed any before that. There it is, in this case. So as you can see, you don't have to be perfect um, your, you know, while going through it, um, but um, you should always be willing to double check your work. here for the figure attribute. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and load our figure style gallery and click figure fig ATR, which is for figure attribute, which is what this line is. Again, interrupted text, so that's pecan. Unload that default gallery, body. We're just gonna say pecan. And again, we, you can create your own galleries if you find that you have certain styles that you use very commonly. Um, some of you, while we were going through the earlier things, saw that I had extra um, extra style galleries. These are some that I have created uh, just on my own that have 
certain um, things that I use often. So that's an option for you as well. And here we have some equations. So that here, I believe equations should be the Q. It's under figure. So we'll go back here. Go to figure. And okay. And we're just going to call these EQ. Yeah. Now, and finally, we have another pecan. So I'm going to go ahead fix that paragraph continued. And we're going to make this TD. All right, and so I'm going to go up here. As you can tell, I use um, all three methods of uh, composing because usually that's the way that it works. Either this paragraph mark uh, can't be deleted just because of the table's at the end and it's not actually uh, there. And so the next step, we have two more steps to go through and we're going to go through these just a little bit quicker um, as they involve many of the same tasks that we've already uh, been doing. So now we're going to apply uh, specific character styles that need to be applied to certain sections. And I'll just tell you which ones they are. Um, if you have a figure, um, uh, some examples, for example, if you have dialogue speakers that need to be uh, highlighted in some way in dialogue, you'd apply uh, DISPK. Uh, fig, fig H and for figurehead numbers if you have those and those need to be delineated in such a way and all of these are marked in the SEML list as um, as um, character and paragraph style pairs so I know I have dialogue so we're gonna go right down to that dialogue and we're gonna compose this as DISPK for dire table does have a table head number so we are gonna worry about this one we're going to make that THN, and I'm using a little quick style bar up there just to make it a little quicker. There we go. And those are our characters uh, throughout um, the character paragraph pairs throughout this um, document, right? And then the last thing we do before running our cleanup and uploading uh, to the hub, which we'll uh, save uh, for next time, right, is we um, need to insert structure indicators and structure indicators um, the hub is pretty smart at picking up things like CT CN and delineating that as you know self-contained um, you know chapter text so for example it'll know that the table of contents is one chapter uh, or one section of a book and then the chapter uh, followed by um, proceed excuse me by CN is one uh, chapter but if you do not, for especially front matter material, if you do not um, sort of indicate to the hub that, that each section is its own um, separate piece of content, it'll bunch everything together. So we include, um, yeah. Um, so we'll include uh, the insert um, um, structure indicators. And so to do that, um, all you have to do, it's, it's really simple, is just highlight the text. And for example, I know that this is the half title. The half title in a book is usually on its own. So um, we're going to treat that as if it were its own chapter. Structure indicators have um, a, another function, which we'll discuss later. I don't want to bog people down with too much um, information. We'll discuss that next class. So here, I'm going to go to the SAI, insert structure indicators, and I'm going to call it chapter. Here you go. And then you'll see that the SAI automatically says begin chapter, end chapter, and now OTN demo as a half title will actually um, will actually be on its own, and it won't be lumped in with the series page or um, the uh, title page or the copyright page or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for the rest of this front matter, which is the only place where we have to do it here for the demo. Right. Tell us, while you're doing that, I'm just going to mention real quick, we will go over this in a little bit more detail later on. Um, for, for the purposes of this, you can almost think of these as indicating page breaks. Uh, they'll be, they'll display a certain way in typesetting. They won't display as literal text. 
Um, and they, they do have a function to break pages in electronic versions of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but we don't need to do them around things that are what we call inherently structural, which will be a topic to discuss next week, like CTFM, chapter number, anything that already has kind of like a chapter uh, designation at this point. Mm-hmm. And parts and unit titles are included in that as well. Um, and so there, now at this point, our file is mostly composed. You'll notice like, hey, wait a second, we still have a lot of normal like floating around in here. Uh, but that is okay because the hub will actually compose normal paragraphs. It will make those P and will add P after P after spacing distinctions as needed um, throughout um, the document once you upload into the refiner, which we'll discuss uh, next week. So that's just a little bit of a preview. Um, 